The invariant set for the horseshoe map that we have constructed is a strange kind of a set. Strange enough to merit a side quest. What follows is bonus material. It is not central to our storyline, but it is a very nice distraction. If we focus on that invariant set for the horseshoe map, we called it Lambda. It seems like a rather thin set. Remember what we were doing where we're taking iterates of the map forward and again and again and again, and the inverse again and again and again, all that folding, stretching, folding, stretching, and we're taking the intersection of all these things. Now what's left over seems like is not that much there. It seems thin. What is actually left over after this infinite process of intersection? What kind of set is this? This type of set where you're recursively removing more and more and more stuff is called a Cantor set. This is very cool. To get a feel for Cantor sets, let's begin with a classic one-dimensional example. This is called the Middle Thirds Cantor set. What we're going to do is we're going to begin with an interval. The interval, let's say from 0 to 1. And then what we do is we remove the middle third of that interval. I remove the open subset between 1 third and 2 thirds. And what I have left over is a pair of closed intervals. And what I'm going to do next is do this process recursively. Remove the middle third from each of those two intervals, and then remove the middle thirds from each of the remaining intervals. I keep going forever and ever. What does this look like? Well, we can imagine this, can't we? I remove the first middle third, then I'm removing two subintervals of length one ninth each, and then I'm removing four subintervals of length what, one twenty seventh, and then eight subintervals. And then after that, I have to remove 16 subintervals, and this keeps going and going. We repeat this process recursively, each time removing a middle third from this increasing number of subintervals until what is left is a Cantor set. Now let's think. What have we removed from this interval? We start with that interval. It has length 1. I remove the middle third, so I'm taking away one third of the length. And then I remove two subintervals of length one ninth. And then I remove four subintervals of length one twenty seventh. And I keep going. At the nth step, I'm removing two to the n subintervals of length one over three to the n plus one. So to add up the total amount that I'm removing, I take the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 2 to the n divided by 3 to the n plus 1. Check that the indexing is right on that. If I pull out a factor of 1 third, then what's left is the sum of 2 thirds to the n. And that's a straight up geometric series. What I get for the total length is 1 third times quantity 1 over 1 minus 2 thirds. That's one third times three. That's one. Ha <laughs> ha. I've removed the entire length of the interval. And what does that mean? And what that means is that there's not much left from the point of view of length or measure. There are no subintervals in this Cantor set. What remains is, well, you might call it dust. Just a smattering of points. However, there are a lot of such points which are remaining. Here's the idea. We can represent numbers in that interval from 0 to 1 using decimals, yes, but let's use base 3 decimals. So any point x in that interval has a base 3 decimal expansion where all the digits are either a 0, a 1, or a 2. Now here's a fact. That middle third's Cantor set consists of those decimals which do not have any one digits. So if I don't have a one for the first digit, that's 
removing the middle third of the interval. And we keep going, going, going. Now, how many such decimals are there? Well, there's quite a lot, right? I can write down any sequence using just zero and two digits. And that is going to be an efficient representation of my Cantor set. Now, that observation is key to some deeper properties of this Cantor set. This simple middle thirds Cantor set is uncountably infinite, if you know what that means. If you don't, don't worry about it. And here's the thing. This set as a space, as a metric space where we could talk about distances based on distance in the interval, this Cantor space is homeomorphic to the infinite binary decimals, the set 0, 1 to the and to the power of the natural numbers, this space that we worked with when doing symbolic dynamics. And that's why this Cantor space is so significant. What we are going to see, what we're going to take advantage of later on in the next chapter is that the horseshoe invariant set lambda is just like this middle thirds Cantor set, a Cantor space. It is really the same space up to homeomorphism. Everything is homeomorphic to binary decimals in some form or fashion. Now, you could imagine the horseshoe invariant set lambda as being something like a product of two middle thirds Cantor sets. Or maybe they're not middle thirds. Maybe you're taking out a middle half or a middle quarter. It doesn't matter. All of these spaces are going to be homeomorphic. That is topologically equivalent. Now, I'm not proving that. That might even not make sense. That's okay. This is bonus material. This is just for fun. But if you go on to do deeper work in dynamical systems or real analysis or probability, you're going to run into Cantor spaces. They're pretty cool.